Swiss luxury watch manufacturer, Omega ranks as one of the most historically significant brands on the market. For the avid watch buyer, Omega also presents one of the most straightforward catalogs of any brand. The secret lies in its four pillar collections derived from Omega's greatest success stories Seamaster, Constellation, Speedmaster, and Deville. And today, we are going to review five of these amazing watches. All the watches product buying links are given in the video description. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more videos. From the first time I laid eyes on the Omega Seamaster Aqua Terra World Timer 150 meter coaxial master chronometer GMT and tried it on, I knew that I had to get it sooner or later. The stunning dial caught my attention and it is definitely the star of the show. There is the laser ablated grade 5 titanium plate in the center of the dial. Interesting fact is that the colors are a result of the heat from the laser during the sculpting process. The globe you see there is from the perspective of looking down from the North Pole. The time zones actually line up with the globe so that is a cool fact as well. Around the globe is a 24-hour disc which has a glass cover and you can tell the time of 24 different cities around the chapter ring that line up with it. On the dial of the Omega Seamaster Aqua Terra World Timer there are two shades of blue on the disc to differentiate day from night. At the heart of the watch is the Meta's certified caliber 8938, with a 60-hour power reserve. It's a beautiful movement and you can enjoy it from the see-through sapphire case back. To adjust the hour hand if you are in a new city, unscrew the crown and pull it to the first position. The date will jump ahead if you move the hour hand past the 12 o'clock position, you can turn the hour hand back as well and the date will then go back a day. The watch comes with two strap options, the steel bracelet or the blue rubber strap with deployant clasp. I decided to go with the rubber strap as I am able to adjust the strap easily by just moving the strap on that deployant clasp to a higher or lower hole. For me, the blue strap definitely complements the dial. The 43mm case sits really nicely. On my 8-inch wrist and wearing the watch throughout the day does not cause any discomfort. To me, this watch is a masterpiece and I'm enjoying every moment that I have it on my wrist. An ad for the original Omega Ploprof stated, it may not look pretty on the surface, but deep down it's beautiful. It is a curious statement for an official advertisement, but well sums up a lot of what the original early 1970s Super Diver was all about. Omega was one of the lead innovators along with Rolex in the market to supply serious professional divers, most notably the likes of Jacques Cousteau, with reliable diving watch instruments. In its heyday, the Ploprof was an extremely advanced tool based on years of development. Omega achieved a design that not only withstood the depths, but was able to, time and time again, remain underwater for very long periods of time. It sported unique features such as a more or less one-piece case, easy-to-grip safety bezel, and secure crown. It was arguably the best diving instrument of its time. It was also very expensive. As a professional instrument it actually sat more or less at the top of the Omega product line and was extremely expensive even considering its professional use market. Nevertheless, the watch was a hit with pros and consumers alike. Yet Omega needed to make excuses for its looks. Even after a few years on the market, the Seamaster Ploprof 1200M is a strong seller, but it isn't cheap. Then again, it wasn't cheap back in the early 1970s either. Has the design become more sexy over the years? Even by female standards? I can't speak for all women, but I think it certainly has gained a degree of honorary elegance given what it is. I think anyone can appreciate its tool watch spirit. As an instrument, it works rather flawlessly. Retail price for the Omega Seamaster Ploprof 1200m watch is $9,400 on the strap and $9,700 on the bracelet. In 2018, a year in which Omega devoted much of its marketing muscle not to the Speedmaster but to its dive watch predecessor, the Seamaster, there was among the flood of Seamasters one very notable return to the dark side, the Speedmaster.
Dark Side of the Moon Apollo 8, a tribute to the historic 1968 lunar mission that marks its 50th anniversary in 2018. That mission was the second manned spaceflight launched by the United States and the first to leave Earth's orbit, reach and orbit the moon, and return safely to Earth. It paved the way for the more famous Apollo 11 mission in 1969, which first landed men on the moon and from which the Omega Speedmaster, the watch worn by those men on the lunar surface, earned its enduring moonwatch nickname. The watch is, most notably, the first Speedmaster moonwatch to contain a skeletonized version of the watch's storied movement, caliber 1861. However, as I realized after having the chance to spend two weeks with this timepiece, my personal favorite of Omega's 2018 lineup, the skeletonization is just the tip of the aesthetic iceberg. Oh, start with the exterior. Omega has outfitted the Apollo 8 in a 44 mm diameter case, 13.8 mm thick, made entirely of jet black zirconium oxide ceramic, with a polished ceramic tachymeter bezel, bearing white numerals and indices, and the word tachymeter in bright yellow. The use of this highlight color, which is associated with speed, and which we'll also find elsewhere on the watch's dial and strap, is a callback to the Omega Speedmaster racing model from 1968, as is the tachymeter feature itself. As its name implies, the Speedmaster chronograph was a watch built for timing auto races long before it became inextricably linked with space exploration. With its vintage Speedmaster design elements, first of its kind open-worked and decorated movement and historical lineage, I expect many, many potential owners to be as over the moon for this timepiece as I was. The cool thing about this Omega Seamaster 300 Spectre is that it comes with all recent innovations done by Omega. If you look at the Seamaster 300 meter that was used in GoldenEye and Tomorrow Never Dies as Bond's watch, this Seamaster shows how much has changed over the past two decades at Omega. It was the time when Rolex still shrugged their shoulders regarding Omega perhaps, but today 20 years later I am convinced they are watching them very closely. This Omega Seamaster 300 Spectre comes with the in-house developed and produced caliber 8400 movement, a ceramic bezel with liquid metal hour scale and a new bracelet as well as a bond NATO strap. Furthermore, the watch has a wonderful and timeless design based on that very first Seamaster 300 CK2913 in 1957. Omega had a lot going on in the 1950s with their flagship constellation watches, Seamaster calendar watches, and since 1957 of course the Seamaster 300, Speedmaster and Railmaster. For collectors a wonderful period to collect Omega watches from. It was a great move from Omega to decide to bring back that classic Seamaster 300. The name confusion with the aforementioned Seamaster 300M. Speedmaster and Railmaster, for collectors a wonderful period to collect, Omega, watches from. It was a great move from Omega to decide to bring back that classic Seamaster 300. The name confusion with the aforementioned Seamaster 300, is something that I can accept. In short, the Omega Seamaster 300 Spectre is packed with all the good things Omega came up with in the last 15 years. Let me get started by saying that the original Ed White Speedmaster is my grail watch. I am a vintage Speedmaster purist, but this watch had me converted to the modern reissue gang pretty quickly, this straight lug case and simpler dial, were such big selling points. Until Omega CEO Ray Ray comes to his senses and makes a true Ed White reissue then the Omega Speedmaster first Omega in space is as close as I am going to get. It is a gorgeous watch, for sure, and can seem a bit more wearable than the standard Speedmaster, even though these eyes difference is almost negligible. It houses the legendary 1861 manual wind chronograph movement that has remained pretty much unchanged for decades, so don't expect hacking, seconds, or any modern technology. You aren't buying this watch to be in the present. You are buying it to be connected to the past. Even though this is a reissue of the CK2998, they did screw up on a few things that will be obvious to the vintage diehards. The first thing that annoyed me was the modern font and logo on the dial. This could have been an easy win as they did the non-professional dial right on another vintage reissue speedy. The running seconds hand should be the same as the other subdials. 
I don't know what they were thinking with this one. Finally they should have made this with Plexi or at least had that option available. All in all, the Omega Speedmaster First Omega in Space is an amazing watch and perfect for people who are looking for something off the normal Speedmaster beaten path.